Calypso, the Sweet Nymph. The first books of the epic, books one through four, and books are just like chapters, tell about Odysseus's son, Telemachus. Telemachus has been searching the Mediterranean world for his father, who has never returned, from the ten-year Trojan War. Today, Odysseus would be listed as missing in action. When we first meet Odysseus in Book 5 of the epic, he is a prisoner of the beautiful goddess Calypso. The old soldier is in despair. He has spent ten years, seven of them as Calypso's not entirely unwilling captive, trying to get home. The goddess Athena has supported and helped Odysseus on his long journey, and now she begs her father Zeus to help her favorite, and Zeus agrees. He sends the messenger god Hermes to Calypso's island to order Odysseus released. It is important to remember that although Calypso is not described as evil, her seductive charms, even her promises of immortality for Odysseus, threatens to keep the hero away from his wife, Penelope. And as you can see, we're actually going to skip the first few lines and pick up on line 47. Divine Calypso, the mistress of the isle, was now at home. Upon her hearthstone, a great fire blazing scented the farthest shores with cedar smoke and smoke of thyme, and singing high and low in her sweet voice before her loom a-weaving. She passed her golden shuttle to and fro. A deep wood grew outside with summer leaves. And alder I'm picking up on line 59. Around the smooth wall cave, a cooking vine held purple clusters under ply of green, and four springs bubbling up near one another, shallow and clear, took channels here and there through bends of violets and tender parsley. Even a god who found this place would gaze and feel his heart beat with delight, so Hermes did. But when he, when he had gazed his fill, he entered the wide cave. Now, face to face, the magical Calypso recognized him, as all immortal gods know one another on sight, though seeming strangers far from home. But he saw nothing of the great Odysseus, who sat apart, as a thousand times before, and racked his own heart, groaning with eyes wet, scanning the bare horizon of the sea. So Odysseus is apart from Hermes and Calypso on looking out at the sea and crying. Hermes tells, Hermes tells Calypso that she must give up Odysseus forever. Now we are directly introduced to Odysseus. Notice what this great warrior is doing when we first meet him. The strong god glittering, Hermes, left her as he spoke. And now her ladyship, having given heed to Zeus's mandate, went to find Odysseus in his stone seat to seaward, tear on tear brimming his eyes. The sweet days of his lifetime were running out in anguish over his exile, for long ago the nymph had ceased to please. Though he fought shy of her in her desire, he lay with her each night, for she compelled him, but when day came, he sat on the rocky shore and broke his own heart growing with eyes wet, scanning the bare horizon of the sea. So Odysseus spends his days looking out at the sea, crying for, want to go, for wanting to go home. And he's sad because he's only getting older. Now she stood near him in her beauty, saying, Oh, forlorn man, be still. Here you need grieve no more. You need not feel your life consumed here. I have pondered it, and I shall help you go. Notice how she says she thought about it, and she decided to help him go when Zeus made her. Calypso promises Odysseus a raft and provisions or food to help him homeward without harm, provided the gods wish it. Now Odysseus and Calypso say goodbye. 
picking up on line 94. He took the chair now left empty by Hermes, where the divine Calypso placed before him victuals or food, and drink of men. Then she sat down facing Odysseus, while her serving maids brought nectar and ambrosia to her side. Then each one's hands went out on each one's feast until they had had their pleasure, and she said. So they basically sat and ate. Son of Laertes, versatile Odysseus, after these years with me, you still desire your old home? Even so, I wish you well. If you could see it all before you go, all the adversity or bad things you face at sea, you would stay here and guard this house and be immortal. Though you wanted her forever, that bride from whom you pine or cry or long for each day, can I be less desirable than she is? Less interesting, less beautiful? Can mortals compare with goddesses in grace and form? To this the strategist Odysseus answered, My lady goddess, there is no cause for anger. My quiet Penelope, how well I know, would seem a shade before your majesty, death and old age being unknown to you while she must die. Yet it is true, each day I long for home, long for the sight of home. So you can see that Odysseus is being careful in how he replies to Calypso. He's telling her, yes, I want to go home to my wife, but he's also complimenting Calypso because he's saying his wife is old and will die one day and will never be as beautiful as Calypso, who will never age or never die. So Odysseus builds the raft and sets sail. But the sea god Poseidon is by no means ready to allow an easy passage over his watery domain. He raises a storm and destroys the raft. It is only with the help of Athena and a sea nymph that Odysseus arrives, broken and battered, on the island of Sicyria. There he hides himself in a pile of leaves and falls into a deep sleep. The next few lines are known as a Homeric simile. Remember, Homer's the author of the Odyssey, and a similar a simile compares two unlike things using like or as. So a Homeric simile is just a really long simile. It's still comparing two things using like, as, or than. It's just super long. So as I read it, think about what is being compared. A man in a distant field, no hearth fires near, will hide a fresh brand in his bed of embers. He'll, um, the man is hiring, uh, hiding um, um, a flame, a small flame, in his bed of embers to keep a spark alive for the next day. So he'll have fire for the next day. So in the leaves, Odysseus hid himself, while over him a, Athena showered sleep that his distress should end and soon soon. In quiet sleep, she sealed his cherished eyes. And so Homer compares Odysseus sleeping to a man hiding an eye, an ember, so he has fire for the next day, just like Odysseus needs to sleep, so he has energy the next day.